In today's video, we're going to talk about Phil. Not Dr. Phil or your Uncle Phil, but what you need to do to preserve dynamic range and get the most out of your sensor. 10 years ago, it was perfectly acceptable for you to have jet black shadows, and that's because the sensor couldn't handle it. But the time for that has passed, so if you want to get more out of your pictures, this video will help you do it. So a photographer on Instagram recently asked me to critique his work, and when I looked over the photos, I noticed that the shadows were really black. This is something I see a lot of the time from people who are just starting out and getting into lighting. And so I suggested to him that he do things to maximize shadow detail, like using another light for fill, or a V-flat, or even a reflector. I think a lot of the times photographers obsess about what their main light is, or maybe even their hair light or their edge light, but they forget about one of the most important things, which is the shadow detail. Videographers are often trained in three-point lighting, which essentially is a main light, a hair light, and a fill source. And I wish a lot of the time still photographers were taught sort of the same way that we should really be looking to make sure that we preserve details because you can't always get those back in post. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is passive fill. And passive fill is just light that's bouncing around your scene from your other lights. This could be a white wall or a neutral colored wall or a lightly colored floor or a light ceiling. It could also be a reflector, be it silver or gold or even a V-flat, which is what I use most of the time. If your bounce source has some sort of color to it, like that gold reflector, then of course you're going to get warm shadows. Or if you're shooting with your main light with it pointed towards a colored wall, that wall is going to reflect that color back into your scene. So you want to be cognizant of that when you set up your lights. One of the great things about passive fill is it doesn't break the budget. You won't have to spend money on a new light and you can probably find a bounce source that's fairly inexpensive. Now there is an exact position where you will get the most oomph from your bounce source. And just think about it like playing a game of pool. If you bounce the light from your main light off of that fill source, it'll come back directly at the subject, which means that you'll wanna have that fill source a little bit in front of the subject. Now if you move it back a little bit, maybe you'll get less mounts. If you move it forward a little bit, maybe you'll get less mounts as well. You're just gonna have to find that sweet spot and find it exactly so that you get the fill that you want. If you use a silver reflector, you're going to get more of a boost in general, but it may also have sort of a shiny feel to it. So that's a decision you're gonna have to make in real time when you look at the back of the camera. The same thing can be true for a gold reflector. It's going to give you warm shadows and maybe that will work for you or maybe it won't. I remember recently trying to use a gold reflector for my fill on a woman's headshot and it sort of made them look like they had a five o'clock shadow. So it might not be the best choice. You're just gonna have to make sure when you're looking at the back of the camera that the passive fill source that you're using is best suited for your subject. If I'm shooting outdoors, I will usually have my subject standing with their back to the sun. That way the sun will become my hair light. And then I will light up their face with a soft box. And then my fill source will just be the light that's bouncing around in the natural environment. In general, I like to start with a one to four ratio between my main light and my fill. This essentially would mean that if I were shooting at 5.6, my main light would meter at 5.6 and my bounce source would meter at 2.8. Anything more than this will look fairly moody and anything that's more like a one to two ratio meaning that one is 5.6 and the other is f4, will look fairly flat. This is just a simple aesthetic thing and it's totally up to you. But once I've sort of established that one to four ratio with my light meter, I'm going to go in and look at the back of my screen or my computer and make the final decision. I may wanna increase the fill or reduce the fill, but the decision is something that you're going to have to make on the fly, not a formula that you can follow. The second thing we're gonna talk about today is active fill. An active fill is just where we use an actual light instead of a bounce source. I remember about 10 years ago, a lot of photography blogs had people talking about putting a large modifier behind them and then using it to 
own the shadows. So essentially, if you think about it, you're just going to dial in the exact ratio between your main light and your shadows to be exactly what you want. With active fill, you're gonna control it precisely even down to the 10th of a stop and you'll get the exact look that you want. Usually for my active fill source, I wanna use the largest modifier that I have available. If the largest modifier that I own is my main source, then I want my second largest modifier to be the active fill source. This could be a large umbrella or a large octobox. Really, it's up to you. The smaller the active fill source appears to your subject, the smaller the catch light or reflection will be in their eye. This could be very distracting if it's a pinpoint reflection and you might want to edit it out, or it could look great if it's a really big one. So just look at the eyes and make that decision when you're doing your retouching. Now, if the room you're working in is fairly tight and it has neutral colored walls or neutral colored ceiling, you could always bounce the active fill source off of the wall behind you or off of the wall on the shadow side or off of the ceiling. Which brings me to my next point, which is that the active fill doesn't always have to be behind you. A very popular place for me to use active fill is in a softbox that I've boomed directly over the set. This will create really dramatic shadows that have their own highlights and lowlights. This could add a lot of dynamicism and interest to a portrait. In addition, sometimes I put my active fill source directly behind my main light. I'll do this if I want all the shadows to come from the same direction. Really, this is an artistic decision that you independently will have to make. The smaller the main light source and the larger the fill source, the more contrasty and dynamic the image will be. Think about using maybe a silver beauty dish as your main light and a large octobox as your fill source. This will create sort of a pinpoint of light that will then fall off gradually as you move outwards. Sort of like doing the radial filter in Lightroom, but in person. If your main source and your active fill source are pretty close to the same size, you're really not going to get much of an impact at all. So you might as well move that active fill source behind the camera or somewhere else so that it has more of an effect. So to sum things up, whether you're using active fill or passive fill, you wanna have about a ratio of one to four between your main light and your fill source. And then you wanna look at the back of the camera or your screen and make that judgment as to whether or not the fill is enough or it's too much. You just wanna preserve that detail and get the mood that you're going for without having blacks that are completely crushed. I hope this helped. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave those below. And if you're watching this on Instagram, you can always watch it on YouTube. And if you're watching it on YouTube, please hit subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future. And also hit that thumbs up so maybe more people will see this video as well. Thank you guys so much for your time. Stay safe and I will talk to you soon.